Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over crack spreads and how to back test them. If you're unfamiliar with this type of strategy, you can click on this link and read more about these crack spreads. Now there's a couple of different ways to go about this, but in the script we will be using the 321 crack spread, which involves buying three crude oil contracts and selling two gasoline futures contracts and one heating oil contract. So what we're doing is buying a raw product, which is crude oil and selling the finished products. And later down the script, we'll get to plot these so we'll see the profitability or the refiner margins and see how they behave through time. These first 22 lines are just me reading in my files so that I can extract daily prices on these contracts. So I'm reading in the files, I'm subsetting for only these symbols. I'm going to convert these as XTS objects. I'm going to drop duplicate dates by running make index unique. And then I'm going to merge all the contracts into a single XTS object called crack. If you're a Patreon member, I'll go ahead and provide this data for you. You'll just have to run everything here on after. And again, by taking a look at this variable, we can see that we have our futures contracts ranging back to 2012. All right, so now we need to standardize the heating oil and our gasoline futures contracts because as you can tell by the prices, these two contracts are prices per gallon and our crude oil contract are prices per barrel. So what we're gonna do is multiply our heating oil and gasoline prices by 42 because this is the number of gallons in each barrel of crude oil. So let's standardize our prices. So let's scroll up here. I'm going to multiply these two contracts by 42 and add it to our XCS object. Now that we have our prices standardized, we can add the margin per barrel. So this is the margin that refiners can make according to the market per barrel of oil. So we're going to add the margins to our XCS object. And if we take a look, now we have our standardized prices for heating oil and gasoline and the margins for each. So as an example, we can buy one barrel of crude oil for 105. We can make 42 gallons of gasoline and sell it for 334. If we sell all 42 gallons, we can expect to make a total of 140. If we subtract that from our cost, we get our margin, which is $35. And the same goes for heating oil. Now that we have our margins, we can calculate our crack spread. So if we go back to our script, we're gonna go ahead and add the crack spread to the XDS object by multiplying our gasoline margin by two since we're using two contracts and adding our heating oil margin for that one contract. Once we add those up, we divide by three since this involves three contracts. And now we have our margin for these two gasoline contracts and our heating oil contract. So let's go ahead and run that and plot it. All right, we see that for the most part, these margins stay between 10 and 30, with the exception of this year, where it was highly profitable for these refiners to make these oil products. So as an example, let's plot this against CBX. So let's close this out. I'm going to get data from Yahoo Finance for CBX. We're going to merge our crack spread with the adjusted closes of the stock. I'm going to reformat the column names, convert this as a data frame to plot, and we're going to use Qplot to plot these two time series. And if we expand that plot, so from about 2016 to 2020, we see that margins were relatively stable. Therefore, we saw that this stock was able to take advantage of relatively stable margins. It's until we get these shocks, such as in 2020, where we saw a decline in margins. Therefore, the stock price fell in 2020. And then afterwards, the margins increase at a rapid pace. And we saw the same for the stock. So by taking a look at the margin, we can see some sort of meme reversion. So what I decided to do in the script was bet for margins margin expansion once the margins got below 10 and betting against the margin or betting that the margins will come down if this spread gets over 30 and holding this spread for a predetermined amount of time. So I wrote a function that tests that. So if we go to our script and scroll up, we're going to open this function. So the user can specify the oversold and overbought levels along with the number of days to hold. So this will be our lower levels and this will be our upper levels. And once we pass those in, we're going to subset all the cases since 2012 where our spread was less than or equal to our oversold level. And that will be an indication to buy. And when the margin increases above our overbought levels, we're going to subset those cases and those will be our sell signals. Once we have subset each, we're going to extract the indices since these are XTS objects. And for each of those days where we generated a signal, we're going to pass in that date. So if we expand this 
For each of the days we got a signal, we're going to subset our data, we're going to use advance from our quantlib to get the future contracts prices and trading days after, and that'll give us the prices of when we closed our spread. We're going to convert each as a data frame, we're going to calculate the PL. So for the buy signals, we're betting that the margins will improve, so we're long our final products and we're short crude oil at the rate of three contracts for crude oil, two for gasoline and one for heating oil. And as you see, I took the difference between our closing value for the futures contract minus the opening or where we opened our position for crude oil. So I'm taking the difference of these future contracts, dividing by their minimum tick value, multiplying by the number of contracts and multiply it again by their minimum tick value. So that'll give us our PL for each of these contracts. We sum those together to get our gross PL. And then we're gonna go ahead and combine all of our data and format the column names. So we'll get a data frame of our opening date, the opening prices for each of the futures contracts, the opening price of the crack spread, the close date, or when we closed our position, the closing price after end days for each of these futures contracts, along with the ending margin for the crack spread, our PL for each of these contracts, our gross PL, and the side, which in this case was bought. And then finally, just returning that as a data frame. So it'll run this for each of the dates. We generated a signal in our buy object. So we minimize that. This will get returned as a list. We need to row bind all of our results and turn it back into a data frame. We're gonna do the same thing for our sell signals. The only key difference is how we calculate our PL. So if we open this up, everything stays exactly the same. But now since we're betting that the margins will contract, we need to short our refined products and buy crude oil. Once we have our PLs, we combine those as a data frame. And in this case, the side will be sold. And then finally, just returning that data frame. So we'll go ahead and minimize this. And since I'm gonna be row binding our sell signals with our buy signals, we need to convert this as a data frame as well. And then finally, just return the full data set for buy and sell. So let's go ahead and minimize this function. We'll go ahead and run it. Now I'm gonna be testing the function by passing in 10 for our oversold and 40 for our overbought and holding for 20 trading days. So let's go ahead and run that line. I'm gonna split this data frame for the cases where we bought and for the cases where we sold. So if we run these two lines, we'll take a look at bought. All right, so we have a total of 118 cases. So we have our opening date, the entry price for the crude oil, heating oil, and gasoline futures the crack spread on that day. And then we have our closing date along with the prices for each of these futures contracts and where the crack spread ended on this day. So for all these buy signals, we're betting that these margins will expand. And for the most part, it seems that they did after 20 trading days. So we can analyze the PLs for each of the contracts. So this column will be our crude oil PL, gasoline futures PL, and our heating oil PL. If we sum these up, we get our gross PL. So for the most part, it seems that all of these stayed positive. Now let's plot the equity curve for each of these sides. So here in our script, I'm gonna plot the cumulative sum of our gross PL for our buy signals, and I'm gonna add the cumulative sum of our gross PL for our sell signals. So let's go ahead and compare these. Let's expand this plot. All right, so the black line is the equity curve for our buy signals, the red one for our sell signals, and we do see some sort of drawdown, which was later recouped. But for the most part, we see that the long side is less volatile, and there's probably more to test, such as seasonality. As you know, prices are relatively higher during the summer times, at least here in the US. So those are other ideas that you can test. Well guys, this concludes the video. I hope you have a better understanding of crack spreads and how they are used. So I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description area to the Patreon where you can find the script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.